the last two years really have shown that against all the odds, people have moved their workplace into the home, so many of us. Um, Shiva, rush to you first on this. Um, as an employment lawyer, what do you make of this right to request uh, re remote working bill? It's, it's, it's quite a mouthful, but essentially it's a right to request it. Yeah, it's a right to request and, and I think probably as much as, as can be done in terms of obviously remote work was forced on people who could do work from home, mainly, may, maybe office workers. Um, as part of the government strategy on remote work, which was announced last year, we had hoped to see this legislation in Q3 or Q4 of 2021, but it's materialised now. We probably have a gap because it's only a draft scheme of a bill. We don't actually have even draft legislation yet, so that's hoped to come in um, at Easter time and then be passed before the summer. It's a great roadmap for employees in terms of setting out some floor rights about you know, how they go about making a request. Mm -hmm. And they also have visibility about what an employer has to do. So the employer must respond to the request within 12 weeks. Um, if they're going to uh, accede to the request, they must give details about how the arrangement is going to work, how many days it'll, it'll work on, when it's going to start, if there's going to be a trial period, if they're going to refuse the request, uh, the draft scheme at the moment sets out some business reasons as to why an employer might refuse a request, but yeah. they're not limited to that. So and let's just talk about that, yeah. because that's what struck a lot of people when they looked at this. Maybe we're just not used to looking at this sort of legislation, but the 13 opt-outs essentially for a boss to say, no, this doesn't work for us. Uh, why why are, are they there? Uh, because it, it has sort of been you know, flagged up as being something that's very much to the benefit of an employer rather than a worker in this instance? Well, uh, I don't think I'd necessarily call it an opt-out. I think that um, employers do need to, and, and you know, the, the draft scheme of the bill specifically says that they should retain the ability to determine the working conditions based on their own assessment of their business needs. And I know that while people have been working remotely um, and, you know, have probably been keeping businesses afloat during this time. It may be that employers want to try and grow their businesses now that we're out of the, the well, hopefully out of the pandemic situation and that they want people to come in for collaboration, for innovation. Um, I, I think that most will go for a, a hybrid environment, but I'm, uh, this list isn't set in stone. It is an indication of some of the fair and objective business reasons that could be given as to why um, a, a, a request could be refused. But it, it could be an, an amended request. So an employer might say, I can't facilitate it on a full-time basis, but you could work remotely okay. two days a week. It's not, yeah. it's not an exhaustive list, that no, list of, no. of 13 reasons that we've seen there today. Um, Robert Troy, what do you hope this bill will achieve? Well, I think what we want to build on is one of the positives that came out of COVID-19 and that clearly demonstrated that people could work remotely, could work from home and productivity wasn't necessarily affected. So what we want to do and what we are doing in this piece of legislation is for the first time giving people a right to request to work from home, giving people that choice. Um, and as the previous speaker has said, it clearly outlines the structure and the framework in terms of which that will operate. So um, government has been very strong in terms of our support for people working remotely. Uh, we've invested in remote working hubs mm. uh, in every town and village across the country. Uh, we will do more, invest in more uh, later on this year. But this, for the first time, is given employees a choice to make that request for the ability to work from home. And I think that's very positive. Right. Uh, Breed Smith, it's giving employees the right to make the request, to have that conversation with their boss and for the framework to be established around it. From that point of view, is it a good thing? No, big deal. You could probably do that anyway. There's no law going to stop you asking your employer to facilitate you in such a way. What it doesn't do is give workers a right. There's 13, you call them opt-out clauses, I agree with that, but they, they're grounds on which they would be able to refuse that are being proposed. And two of them include the word potential. Potential negative impact on quality, mm -hmm. potential negative in, impact on performance. And that's a, a big statement for an employer. So it's up to the employer's discretion to describe what that potential is and how that could be um, the basis for refusing either blended working or certain, um, you know, full time working from home or just a day a week working from home. And the thing is, I don't think we should forget for one minute how angry workers are about this because they were asked to stay at home and work from home. Tens of thousands 
thousands of them did that. And you heard from the, um, the, the DJ there, a lot of this stuff was sacrifices, but a lot of it was positives as well. And the sudden nature of the lifting of the restrictions has left a lot of people going, well, what am I going to do about um, you know, looking after my parent or the kids or whatever it is, that they've rearranged their lives over two years and now they're being told Can you see, the, yeah. th that the restrictions are lifted. Can you and see there, are some there isn't instances, a room there for negotiation. There are some instances for... and some jobs where you, you have to go into a workplace. You can't so... drive a bus remotely. Exactly. You can't look after a patient. And Leo Varadkar said that in the telly today, kind of insultingly, because everybody knows there's certain things Things you can't do and they weren't done from home during the pandemic. We're talking about the type of work that was done from home, the sort of office work, the financial services, the local authorities, the public services. And it's absolutely possible to give workers rights within this, not to just give them the right to ask, but rights to where they might be entitled to it. Somebody said on Twitter, I thought it was a great description. It's a bit like Oliver, Twisting's, Oliver Twist saying, please, sir, can I have more? And he gets a ladle across the head, you know, sure, that's all you're getting. And, and, or I'll and come it back feels to you. I'll like come back to you in lots 12 of weeks. Workers about that. Um, I think, I think Robert, not, like not on been... that matter, you know, we, you could arguably have the conversation, and actually, people probably are having that conversation right now about, you know, what, what we're going to do because we're told, yes, workplaces can reopen and you can all go back into the office. Um, and surely all those conversations are, having now, are, are happening now. Is there a need for this legislation which doesn't enshrine workers' actual right to remain and to work at home? Well, I think this legislation is positive because it does ensure for the first time that they have a right to request. And this is going as far as we possibly can based on the legal advice because what Breed is ignoring is that but there is already contract there between employers and employees. So we can't and the state can't uh, unilaterally impose uh, something on employers. But what we can do and what we are doing in this legislation is putting in place a good framework where people can make that request. And the default position is where practically possible people will be facilitated in this request. We went out on a public consultation on this uh, proposal last year. 175 uh, respondents came in. And of that 175 respondents, only 4% of the respondents considered that there should be no reasonable grounds uh, for refusal. You have to have that built in because at I'm the end sorry, of the day... I'm sorry, 175 respondents, who were they? Just members of the public, cross party workers, uh, uh, companies? Uh, companies, unions... Um, um, uh, advocacy groups on behalf of employers and individuals. So there was okay. uh, engagement across stakeholders. Can go. Okay. That's the no, legal mm -hmm. advice. This no, is as far as you can go. It's when, not up to the government to make a decision okay. on behalf of private companies and what they do with their When employees. it comes to legal rights for workers in this country, we're weak. We're weak compared to the European Union. For example, there's no automatic right to trade union recognition. Even under Thatcher, workers in Britain got an automatic right to tra trade union recognition once there was a certain percentage of the workforce who joined the union. We haven't had that. We people in this city fought for it since 20, 1913. But the other thing is, there's always the insistence that we can't, under any circumstances, do anything against the employers. There were circumstances in which the Cleary's workers and the Debenhams workers were refused proper redundancy, and that was never dealt with by this government, even having commissioned and got a, a, a report on it. They haven't dealt with rights for workers in, in, in a way that shows that they're on the side of workers. It's always the insistence that the employers must be facilitated and this is what causes people to feel, where am I getting the rights here? I have the right to ask. Okay. You have the right to ask your employer anything. Right, OK. Um, I, I think that's, I think I that's unfair oh. because like, if you look at the legislation that's coming in this year, there's the statutory sick pay coming in, the protection of tips coming in, an additional public holiday bringing us in line uh, with other European countries. No, it's that's not. not that, One that, additional that, holiday that, would that not is, bring that us in line with other European countries. That is countries. all for the benefit of workers. Or, or, and what we're doing here is you have to have a balance between the employer and the employee. Okay. Because if, work, if businesses is, is not allowed to be supported, to develop and grow, then businesses will be put out of business and you won't be worried whether people are working from home or have the right to request to work from home. We need to protect businesses You're also. You're right is, about this not is, getting in this, this, has been done yeah. in a, this has been done in a very fair, but balanced businesses, approach. Businesses are always looked after. Workers' rights in this country stand at a low edge compared with the rest of your I